Okay, we're going to continue with part two of the uh, victim mindset. Uh, so when I left off, you know, I was talking about the fact that uh, I don't let myself off the hook uh, for anything, and nor was I uh, letting anybody else off the hook, uh, you know, whether government or anything else, by uh, looking at my own actions and behaviors. So. My thing is this. Any of us, right, can be successful if we choose to be, right? And there is nothing preventing us from being successful, right? Any, any excuse that we can come up with, right, is just that, an excuse for most people, right? If you are not like kidnapped, tied up somewhere, then you have choices, right? And you will get results from the choices you choose to make, whether you do things uh, that are going to help you or you do things that are going to harm you. There will be consequences, right, to the decisions that you choose to make. And that's one realization that I had to come to was that there are consequences to my actions and the things that I chose to do with my life. And as a result, you know, I had to deal with certain things such as, you know, doing a long time in prison, a couple decades in prison. Uh, but again, direct result of my behavior. Um, and again, I can blame it on my, my economic status because I ain't never had a lot of money, still don't have a lot of money. Uh, you know, didn't have all the, uh, necessarily all the nice things that, uh, rich folks had and all these other things, right? But there are other people that didn't have a whole lot. And, uh, some people that had much less than I had, but they still didn't choose to go out and commit crimes. They still did not. Uh, do the things that I was doing and harm the community in a way that I was harming the community, right? Uh, and didn't have to face the consequences I faced. So, you know, again, I don't, I look at my behavior and I hold myself responsible for my condition in life, right? However, I'm not just settling for that, right? I'm not just saying, well, you know what, I messed up and so I'm just going to have a messed up life. No, I'm going to have a good life. I'm going to have a successful life. And things are going to get increasingly better, but they're going to get better due to the effort that I choose to put into it. It's not going to be uh, me waiting on someone to give me something. Now, don't get me wrong. I will accept charity. And I know some people say, well, I don't want nobody to give me nothing. Hey, if you want to give me something, I greatly appreciate it. However, I'm not counting on that. I'm not counting on what somebody else can do for me. I'm counting on what I can do for me. That's what's important, right? And I'm going to continue to hold myself accountable. And that's actually what motivates me. When I get stuck in a situation uh, and don't like the way that things are going or think I should uh, have more than what I got, right? Even if it's something that's coming from someone else or something that I believe uh, uh, that someone else should give me or a certain way I feel that they should uh, react towards me and I'm not happy with that reaction or not happy with what they give me, uh, you know, I sometimes get frustrated just like anybody else, but rather than, you know, going around and whining and complaining about what that person didn't give me, I go get it. I figure out a way that I can make it happen for myself legally, legally. Right. Uh, and again, it's up to each individual what they choose to do. Right. But I've gotten myself out of the uh, my old criminal way of living. Right. Did the time for everything I had, to, you know, for the, for the things that I'd done. Right. I did my time and and handled it. Right. I didn't go trying to blame anybody else. I didn't go. uh telling on anybody else for things that they've done, right? 
whatever they done and have nothing to do with me. I still did what I did and uh, faced the, you know, the consequences for what I did. And now I'm done with that. And now I'm, I'm doing something different. I'm living my life different and I'm getting different results, right? Because I'm living my life different. And when I look at the communities, right, different communities, uh, whether we break it down by uh, racial groups or we break it down by, you know, the location, you know, whether, you know, California, Texas, Louisiana, different places, right? No matter how we uh, break these things down, it still comes back to the effort that we choose to put into it. And, 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 and again, I do understand that some communities have more things than others. I do understand that some communities don't have, let's say, uh, after school program for the kids, you know, positive after school programs for the kids and stuff like that. Right. And uh, and we think they should. I think they should. I think they should have more programs for the kids. I really do believe that. However. Right. Why don't we have those programs? And it's not just because the government ain't giving it to us. Right. Number one. You elect the politicians. You're the ones that vote for these people, put these people in office, and you are the ones that are not holding them accountable, right, for what they're doing. And you hold them accountable for not by not putting them back in office or getting their butt out of there, figuring out how to get them out of office, right, when they're not meeting uh, their promises. We don't need to sit there and whine and complain and argue with each other. Uh, about these politicians' policies, right? We can make things happen, right? There are numerous resources, right? But then looking at the communities, why don't we have <coughs> certain programs in the communities, right? Why is that? And there are reasons why, most of which we don't want to hear, right? Or we don't want to accept the truth of the reasons why we don't have the programs in the community or we don't want, and we don't want to accept the reasons why some of our communities are as fucked up as they are. Right. And the reason why, one of the reasons why we don't have the programs and one of the reasons why our communities are so fucked up is because of us. The things that we choose to do in our communities and the things that we choose to prioritize in our communities. Right. In the last video, you know, I talked a little bit about our priorities and how we will uh, prioritize, you know, certain material things over uh, choosing to invest in our self, investing in our future. Right. And. Uh, and and it, it gets deeper and it's worse than that. Right. We 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 uh, glorify the wrong shit. Right. We will glorify. We will brag about who has the most dangerous neighborhood and who uh, whose neighborhood has the highest murder rate. Right. We'll literally brag and try to compete with each other about, you know, uh, topics like this. And that's really sick. Right. Especially if you are a, uh, a civilian or a, a, a person who, who claims to be uh, a law-abiding citizen, right? Uh, that's just crazy, right? That we would, we would uh, glorify and brag about things like this. Or we will, uh, you know, have kids, right, that are going to school, trying to educate themselves, uh, not involved in, you know, not getting involved with, you know, neighborhood gangs or, uh, any illegal activity, maybe they choose not to use alcohol and drugs and, and uh, they just go to school. They kind of educate themselves, maybe get involved in, in, in sports with their school and different things like that. Basically square. Maybe they don't, you know, maybe they don't know how to fight or what have you. And, uh, and, and, and they, and they yeah, choose to uh, try to make, have something good for themselves. Right. We pick on those individuals. You know, we call them square, right? We call them, you know, weak. 
we uh, got all kind of different names for them and we make it as if they're doing something wrong. So we could be out uh, robbing people, committing crimes, uh, harming the neighborhood. Right. And we look at these individuals who are doing the right thing as if they're doing something wrong. Right. And then we wonder what's wrong with our neighborhoods. Right. We wonder what's wrong with our communities. We are what's wrong. Right. We are what's wrong. Right. Look at some of these individuals who uh, they videotape themselves running down the street, walking down the street. Uh, punching people out, maybe punching out old people or, you know, Asians and different people. Right. Just just videotaping themselves, punching them out. Right. That's a problem on so many different levels. Number one, you videotaping yourself committing a crime and then you posting it right for everybody to see. So. Really, law enforcement don't really have a whole lot of work to do to really find you. Right. You just videotape your own freaking crime. Right. That's number one. So you're a fucking idiot. Right. But number two. We, meaning those of us who are not these people, are uh, doing these things, right? Uh, you know, punching out people and committing the crimes. We still look at it and we laugh. Ooh, look, he now he got knocked the fuck out. He, uh, and we make fun of this like it's something cool, and we glorify this shit. That's why they keep doing it, right? If we held these individuals accountable, right? It would stop. Right? It would stop. But we don't hold them accountable. And I'm not necessarily talking about reporting them to law enforcement. Right. You choose how you choose to hold them accountable. But. It would stop. But we don't. Right. And we glorify. It. We make it seem like it's something cool. It's something good. Right. And. uh so they keep doing it, right? When will our mother, when will my mother or your mother, our grandparents, or our children uh, be at the end of one of these people going around punching people out for no reason, right? And we ain't talking about somebody getting into it with somebody having a fight and, uh, over a disagreement or somebody doing something wrong. These are people that are just, that's the whole purpose, just going out solely for the purpose to cause harm to someone. Right. And again, I don't pretend that uh, growing up, I wasn't involved in criminal behavior. I was a problem for the community. Right. In society. Right. So, again, I'm not trying to make myself out to be better than anybody, including these people who are doing these heinous acts. Right. I'm not making myself out to be better than them because I'm not. Right. I'm just different. Right. I choose to be different. I choose to conduct myself differently. And uh and and I and I have a different mindset now. Right? I have a my mindset now is wanting to see all of us, right? As a as a community, as a society, as a let's say a country, right? I want to see us win. I want to see us succeed. I want to see us have good things. I want to see us um you know, not have to struggle as hard, right? Uh, I want to see us be able to get along with each other and be able to have actual conversations, right? Because nowadays we can't have a conversation, right? We determine who's right and who's wrong by who can scream the loudest and who can make more of a, 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 a ruckus, right? But we can't sit down and have a reasonable, logical, intelligent adult conversation, right? It's almost unheard of, right? And not just for those of us, maybe let's say grew up living a, uh, grew up in a criminal lifestyle. I'm talking about even when you look, just look at some of the conversation on YouTube between politicians, right? Of, of opposing parties, right? Cannot have an intelligent conversation because they can't listen, right? We don't listen. They don't listen. Uh, while the person's talking, 
We're trying to figure out our comeback. We're trying to uh, uh, determine how they're wrong rather than just listening to what they have to say and then respond to it. Right. We can't do that. Right. We always feel that we got to make our point or we got to disagree with the person. But the crazy thing is we're disagreeing with them before they ever say anything. So we don't even know what we're disagreeing about. And in a lot of cases, we would have more similarities than differences if we just sat down and talk. But we won't do that. We rather, again, play the victim and point the finger and blame somebody else uh, for our conditions. Right. So I say, you know, let's just try it. Right. Let's try. So. So here's the difference. And I, uh, you know, recently I was talking to somebody about, uh, you know, basically the thing is with my current mindset and uh, the way that I talk about things and the things that I say that we can accomplish and, and, and me not uh, having a victim mindset and, and not uh, uh, blaming all of my problems uh, on the government or white people or anybody else. Uh, you know, some people look at it as a sellout mentality, right? And the way that I speak, right? The way that I speak, some of the things that I say, uh, when I was growing up, I would have called me a sellout as well, right? Due to my lack of understanding and, 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 and not, you know, I, I wouldn't have necessarily wanted to hear the message, uh, that I'm trying to promote, that I'm trying to put out there, right? But the gist of my message, the meaning, the, the I guess you could say the basic foundation of what I'm saying is that we, as a community, as a country, as minority members, as whatever classification you want to identify yourself as, we are strong enough to succeed in life. We have the intelligence. We have the resources to do and become anything that we want, right? There is no one that can hold us back. Now, I'm not saying that there won't be some people against you. I'm not saying that there won't be some people that don't want you to succeed. I'm not saying that that you won't have a difficult struggle, right? I'm not saying that people won't throw obstacles in your path, right? But what I am saying is that you're stronger than that, right? You can overcome any obstacle they put in your way. And not only can you overcome any obstacle that you that they put in your way, it will actually make you stronger. Right. The you know, the old cliche that we used and I don't know who who who, who originated the cliche. Uh, uh, I think someone said Frederick Nietzsche Nietzsche. Right. But I don't I don't know. Right. I didn't actually look it up. But that which does not kill me makes me stronger. Right. That that saying right there. That which does not kill me, make me strong. Now, that saying does not mean, oh, I got to have e easy life and uh, everything's going to work out and I'm going to become strong. What it's actually saying is the struggles, right? The obstacles, all of those things, as long as I'm able to overcome them, I will grow stronger from those things. And it works that way in everything that you do in everything, right? There is not a situation that that does not apply. I don't give a shit if you're talking about weightlifting, right? Uh, if you're talking about weightlifting, in order to get stronger, you need the obstacle of heavier weight, right? So that you become stronger, right? Anything running long distance, right? You need the obstacle of, of, of being able to, to, to run until you can get past whatever your maximum distance was, right? And I can't use all the proper running terms because I don't run, <laughs> but, uh, but that's how we increase, right? Obstacles. Obstacles are how we grow, right? Struggle is how we get strong, right? Even if we talk about 
uh, minority communities in general, right? There was no time that the communities was stronger than when the struggle was great, right? We have become so weak, right? We're weak little victims right now, right? I know people don't want to hear it. And I know you're probably saying, ah, oh, yeah, fuck you, right? I get it. But we are. Look at the shit that we fighting about. Look at what we claiming is, is, is as, as, as struggles and civil rights struggles. So now look at doing the, you know, the early turn of the, early turn of the 20th century and, and, uh, up through the, uh, uh, mid 20th century, right? And the actual struggles that, and the fight that people was fighting for, civil rights and such, right? Look at the things that they were fighting for to actually have the right to go to school, to actually have the right to go to uh, uh, certain restaurants. Just as a, as a people, just having the right to even do it, right? To, uh, you know, not being able to, uh, not just uh, be able to uh, just walk down the street and just have somebody just snatch you up and just be able to lynch you without even, uh, without them having to face any kind of consequences, right? And, 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 and these things being sanctioned, you know, by the government, you know, having the actual government, the police, the fire department, all these different people come out and actually fighting against you, right? On these issues, right? But now what are we doing? What are we fighting about, right? We talking about some <laughs> pronouns, right? And I get it. I get it. I don't uh, speak against, let's say, the uh, different groups, whether the LGBT community or anybody else, right? Uh, they have a right to be safe from uh, anybody harming them and, 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 and being able to live their life how they choose. However, we don't have a right uh, to tell people. Uh, how they have to speak. And, and and these are the things that we're saying now that we're talking about as being rights, right? We're, we're, we're victims because somebody don't speak to us or refer to us exactly the way that we want to. So it's, it's different than, let's say, back in the day uh, when we might have said something like, uh, you know, uh, we don't want uh, somebody referring to you, let's say, with the N-word, for example, right? Saying, okay, they don't say that. Okay, that's one thing. But now we 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 went beyond that, and now we're talking about how someone has to refer to us, what they have to call us, uh, what you know, what pronoun or or what have you, right? And 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 whenever somebody doesn't agree with whatever we have to say, we can't have a conversation about it, right? This person is a a, a misogynist. They are uh, uh, racist. They are, uh, uh, um, I can't think of all the weird ass terms that people use. Uh, was it red pill or um, uh, mansplaining? And I mean, we <laughs> even came up with terms to be victims, right? Special victim terms, right? To uh, classify their victimhood rather than saying, you know what? I don't need them, right? I can do things. I'm strong enough to to accomplish things myself, right? I'm strong enough and, and, and intelligent enough to take advantage of the resources that's been put in place for me, um, and and be successful with my life, right? And I can work with other individuals in my community. And help them, right? Because I know by helping them, right, and educating them, it's going to make me even stronger and even better, right? We won't do that, right? We rather complain. I'm not saying that nobody's doing anything because that would not be accurate, right? There are some people that are doing things, right? But we need more people to actually get out there, uh, stop playing the victim, and, uh, do the things that we can actually do and live up to our full potential, right? We have potential, again, to be anything that we want to be, right? 
we have potential to to get back to who we really are. Right. And I always like to say who we really are rather than saying that we can come become anybody that we want to be, because I believe the things that have caused us to not be successful is not because of who we are. It's because we have chose to be somebody, something that we're not. Right. We have all these different categories and classifications of how we choose to classify ourselves. But the person that we really are is that person that that, that healthy, uh, innocent uh, child that we were born as. Right. When we had so many ideas, creative ideas. Right. And slowly but surely, people smashed that out of us. Right. We allowed people to smash that out of us. And I say that we can get that back. Right. We can be very creative. Right. And when I talk to my clients, again, I work with uh, mostly people who have been uh, incarcerated most for a very long time and uh, committed very serious crimes. Right. But one of the things that I noticed about us who have uh, been incarcerated, when we're incarcerated, we can be very creative. Right. We figure out ways to do things that the average uh, citizen would not think of. I mean, just the things that we do with newspaper. Right. The average citizen wouldn't think about it. Right. I mean, things from making an ex uh, uh, and again, some of the examples are negative, but again, creative. Right. You got to think outside the box. Oh, uh, uh, newspapers. Right. You're able to make an extension. You know, you got your knife or whatever. You got to make an extension with it using a, a piece of newspaper because you can again, paper is technically wood. Right. And you could take that paper, wet it and roll it in such a way. And it dries out and it becomes as hard as a freaking board. Right. So you can make an extension for your weapon. You can actually make it hard enough to, to beat the crap out of somebody. Uh, uh, other people have more positive creativity with it. You know, they would roll up the little sticks and they would make ships and houses and all these different things. Take packs of Kool-Aid and paint them. Right. Uh, some people were able to actually get paint and stuff, but. Some of them would even use like packs of Kool-Aid, different things and paint these these things and sell some of these projects, sometimes making hundreds or even thousands of dollars, you know, over time from selling these things off of basically trash. This is basically trash. You know, you read the newspaper, you throw it away. That's what most of the people listen to this. That's what you do with your newspaper. You read your newspaper. It's trash. You throw it away. Right. Um, or cigarette packs. I remember when they used to allow smoking in prison. Right. The camel cigarette packs. I used to see people uh, would make uh, like picture frames. Right. And, and especially like with the brown part of, of like the camel cigarette packs, they would make them and it would look like wood. It would look like the natural wood. Right. And it would make these nice picture frames and they would do other things besides picture frames. But all the stuff, it would be so nice and professional. Right. And they would do it by just twisting up the paper in certain ways and, and putting it together. Right. And so they were able to do these to 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 be creative enough to use trash. Right. Because, I mean, for those of you that smoke cigarettes, I smoke. Right. Uh, when you get done smoking your cigarettes, what do you do with the empty pack? I, I, I would assume that most of you are going to say throw it in the trash, if not every last one of you. Right. You throw it in the trash. Same with the newspaper. You throw it in the trash or you put it in a recycle thing. Right. You recycle it. Right. But. Basically, it's trash. You don't get anything out of it. Right. These people are able to to learn how to make money off of these things and not just selling it to each other as as uh, inmates. They're selling these things to people in the community. Right. They were creative. But then when we get out of prison, we forget all about all that creativity and we run right back to our crane. Uh, excuse me. Same uh, criminal activities. Right. And again, I'm not intending this video or any other video that I may create to talk down on people who may be out there living that lifestyle or stuck in that lifestyle or don't realize that there's another way. Right? I'm not talking down on them because I was one of them, right? Definitely one of them, right? And, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, I, I live that way more long, uh, longer uh, than I've lived this way. And, and by that way and this way, I mean uh, the criminal activity is that way and this way as as uh, trying to be a productive citizen or, or living as a productive citizen. Forget trying. Right. 
Uh, so I'm not, I'm not down on anybody, nor do I consider myself to be better than anyone, right? I don't think I'm better than anyone, nor do I think anyone's better than me, right? And, I, and that's one thing we all have to remember, that none of us, uh, that no one is better than us as individuals, right? And we're not better than anyone else, right? And the reason is that we have not had each other's experience, right? Uh, so uh, we, can, we can choose to, to uh, succeed in life, but will we, right? Or will we uh, complain or continue to complain about what we don't have, um, uh, what we think someone owes us, uh, what we would like someone to give to us, all these different things. We can choose to do those things. But I say it would be better to uh, spend that time uh, working on ourselves, finding uh, the resources that are available that can help us to succeed, start educating our children on proper values, actual values, and helping them to learn to prioritize the correct messages, right? And a lot of these messages are not, not helping us. Right. Even the ones that are saying that they're speaking in our favor and and that they're speaking against systemic racism and all these different things. They're actually freaking making us weak. They're making us like weak little victims that need the government to protect us. Right. And we're not that fucking weak. Right. So I say that we're stronger than that. They say that we're so weak that we can't survive unless they pass all these laws and regulations to protect us from people speaking to us badly. Right. Right. So I'm saying you're strong. They saying you're weak, but I'm the sellout. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you know, what are we going to do? Right. Are we going to uh, sit back and complain about it? Cause that is your choice, right? You have a free, uh, you have a freedom to make the choices you choose. You're also free to even play the victim, right? That is your choice. You're free to, to uh, stay poor. You're free to stay miserable. But you're also free to choose to be successful, right? To choose to educate yourself, right? And, and success is not defined by how much money you got. There are a lot of people that don't have much money at all and don't have a lot of stuff but they're very successful because they're content with their life, right? They love their family and they uh, uh, are content, right? And I don't mean content in a way that it means like settling, like they, okay, I can settle for this. No, they're content. Like when they look around at their life, they feel like life is good, right? That's success, right? And they choose to be successful. But a lot of us, we're miserable and we don't even know why we're miserable. And one of the reasons why we're miserable, because we keep internalizing this victim message that tells us that everybody's out to get us. Nobody wants to give us anything. And other people are, are, are so privileged and we're so disenfranchised or disadvantaged and all these other terms that they choose to use. Right now, again, I'm willing to go with that. If they call me disenfranchised and then they give me some shit to help me, hey, cool, I'll, I'll roll with it, right? However, I'm not going to call myself disenfranchised or victim or any of this other bullshit uh, that they put out there, right? I consider myself uh, to be, number one, a man, right, who has the intelligence to figure out what I need to do in order for me to be successful. And yes, uh, as, as it relates to, let's say, business, still working on, I'm still figuring it out exactly uh, uh, what my end game is going to be, right? Because I, I do know this, that whatever I do to make for a living, I want to do something similar to this. I want to... Uh, uh, bring us out of uh, that victim mentality. I want us to 
uh, know that we're intelligent, uh, we're powerful, we can have what we want, but we have to work for it. We are nobody's victim, and uh, we don't need the government to protect us. We can protect ourselves. And, uh, and also that we uh, learn how to work together. And I mean everybody, right? I don't mean, let's say, just black folks, let's say, right? But everybody, right? We have to get to a point where we can all work together. Right. And I mean, from the different groups. Now, I don't think there'll ever come a time. It would be nice if it did that every single person on the earth will be moving in one direction, doing the right thing. I don't think that time is going to come. However, there can be a time that there, that the majority of us as people are moving in a similar direction. Right. And I say similar because we're not going to be necessarily doing the same things but we're all moving towards something positive, right? We're all uh, complementing each other, right? And that's what it's about, right? That's how people grow. That's how people are successful. Like sometimes those of us that are jealous about certain groups of people that are able to be successful or what have you, and maybe a large community of them, <coughs> or let's say financially successful. And uh, one of the differences between those of us that are, uh, let's say, either jealous of them or mad at them or complain about uh, what they're able to do is that they choose to do things that complement each other's effort, right? So while one person is, let's say, has a business, uh, uh, let's say one, one, one guy is uh, uh, producing computer chips, let's say, right? They're producing computer chips. So his buddy is making, you know, computers, <laughs> right? Buying computer chips from his friend, right? Who then is selling it to his other buddy that has the tech store uh, selling computers, right? And uh, and this again, this is a, uh, an example, right, of how uh, people choose to work together. But then, you know, they'll have uh, in the media, right, pointing fingers just because people, let's say the guy walking around, he got a, a, a really nice car, say a, a Rolls Royce or, or whatever. And Rolls Royce actually nowadays actually don't look too cool. But anyway, you got like a really nice car, Lamborghini, whatever. And, uh, oh, he's privileged. He's this, he's that. And then we act as though uh, they're supposed to just be giving their money away to other people, right? They work for their shit, right? They went to work. They earned their money. And in some cases, they were born into rich families. All that means is that their parents chose to provide for their next generation, which is what we should be doing, right? And I say that we can do this, right? There are resources out there. And I challenge you to prove me wrong. Prove to me that. If you chose to educate yourself, that there are not resources available to help you. Prove me wrong. Right. Prove to me that you couldn't decide to go and start your own business. Now, if you don't have a business idea or if you're not putting any any effort into, let's say, organizing a business plan. No, you ain't going to have no business. But that's because you ain't putting no effort into it. But I'm saying, show me that you doing all of putting all of your effort into doing your part, but you can, still can't succeed. I'm saying, prove me wrong, right? And I know you don't have to prove shit to me, but it would be an interesting experience, uh, ex experiment, right? Because if you were to go out and do the things that you need to do in order to be successful, and your sole intention is to prove me wrong, right? That the resources are not there available, but you really put actual effort into it, right? The thing is, you won't bear to prove me wrong. And that's good for you because that means you're going to be successful, right? You're going to have what you want in life. 
because you put the effort into it. That's all I'm saying. So you have individuals saying you're a victim, that you're weak, that you need them, and, and that they have to protect you. I'm saying that you're strong, that you're intelligent, that it's nice if somebody chooses to help you, but if they don't choose to help you, you're going to be successful anyway, right? That's my message, right? How is that wrong? You tell me.